There's a lot you can do with just the basic panel in Lightroom Classic. Welcome to the Visual Center, I'm Trent. And in this post-production test video, I'm gonna share with you how you can edit your images using the basic panel in Lightroom Classic. Let's take a look. Now here we are in the develop module in Lightroom Classic. Beneath the histogram on the right side panel, we have this basic dropdown. Let's click it to open it. The first item on the panel is treatment. This is how we convert our images from black and white and back to color. Now, this is the best and simplest way to convert our images to black and white in Lightroom Classic. So this is what I recommend you use if you wanna create a black and white image. Now, next we have profile. Now, I'm not gonna go over profile in this video. It's an important topic and deserves its own video. So be sure to subscribe so you can follow along and you won't miss it. All right, beneath the profile option, we have our white balance settings. If I select this as shot dropdown, you can see I have things like auto, shade, tungsten, fluorescent, flash, daylight. These are the same options you should have on your camera when selecting a white balance. Now, if you select as shot, it's going to reflect whatever white balance you had selected on your camera. But I can actually go down and select daylight if I wanted. Now you can see my temp and temp slider have actually updated to reflect the daylight temperature. So I can actually go through and select these predetermined white balance settings like I can on my camera. Now, if I go back to as shot, if I reset this, I can actually change the temperature manually. I can cool down my image by sliding the temp to the left or I can warm up my image by sliding the temperature to the right. If I double click, it resets that slider. I can do the same with the tint. I can add green to my image or add magenta to my image. Now, I'll be honest, the tint slider is one I struggle with most often. It can be difficult to dial in that green and magenta cast on an image. But let me show you how you can more easily manage your white balance on your image manually. So I'm gonna double click those sliders just to reset them. This is one of my favorite tools in Lightroom. This is the white balance selector. It's a little eyedropper icon. I can either click on it or type the letter W to select this tool. Now, once I click on it, I hover over the image and I find a neutral part of the image. Now you can see there's a color cast to the image. If I find a neutral point in this image and select it, it should adjust that neutral point that I selected to be a neutral point. It should compensate and adjust this temp and this tint to neutralize that point I selected, thus correcting the white balance of the image. Now in this image, I could select a few different points. I could select the lane barrier, the white part of the lane barrier, or I could select his swimming cap, or I could even select his shorts here because they're black. Now you can see there is a little bit of variance in those points that I selected with my white balance selector. So what I like to do is hover over parts of the image and create different selections and see which works best. Now, let me give you a little tip here. Whenever I hover over a part of the image, you should see, be able to see this navigator preview image will update automatically wherever I am pointed at the image. So it's giving me a preview of what my white balance will look like prior to me selecting that point. Here's a few other tips with this tool as well. Auto dismiss. If I select that, every time I click, the tool will stay active and I don't have to reselect it in order to pick a new point. So I can go through here and try to find the best white balance point or the best neutral point to select for my image. Now I think this lane barrier is probably the best point. So now if I just select where the tool was before, it dismisses that tool. If I select the tool again, one thing you will notice when I have the tool activated, there is a five by five pixel target area previewing next to the tool. And you can see RGB values at the very bottom of that target area. One thing you can do is actually, instead of having a five by five pixel loop, you actually increase the scale, the number of pixels for that loop. Sometimes this will give you a better average for your white balance selection. Sometimes it doesn't work. As you can see, his shorts probably aren't completely neutral. Let's go back and select this point over here. So I think that point in my image actually works fairly well. And I don't need this larger scale to get that correct white balance for this image. So I think that's a good starting point. Now I can come back here, deselect the tool, and then manually adjust to refine that white balance even further. Now next we have the tone box. The first slider is exposure, and it does exactly what it sounds like. It's going to adjust the brightness or the overall exposure of the entire image. So if I move it to the right, you can see the image is getting brighter. You can also see that that movement is reflected in my histogram. It's moving to the right, thus getting brighter. Now I'm gonna be referencing the histogram throughout this video. So if you wanna learn more about it, be sure to click on this link to a previous video I made all about the Lightroom Classic histogram. You can see that exposure slider is going to make my image brighter or darker. Now one important thing to remember 
is this numerical value here on the right side is going to reference full stops of exposure. So this is one stop overexposed, two stops overexposed, three stops, and it goes all the way up to five stops. Now that's not gonna be exact, it's not gonna be perfect, but it makes a rough estimate of under or overexposing your image by five stops. Next we have the contrast slider. Now what this does is just adds contrast throughout your image. You can see reflected in my histogram, it adjusts the right part of my histogram further to the right and the left part of my histogram further to the left. So making the darks darker and the brights brighter. And that's reflected in my image. You can see if I go back to zero and increase again, watch what happens to my image. The blacks are getting darker and the highlights are getting brighter. So for this image, I would actually probably change my exposure, I'd probably bring it up about half a stop and then increase my contrast to about that point. All right, next we have highlights, shadows, and whites. Highlights are gonna affect this highlight area of my histogram. Now, if you watch my histogram video, you know that I can select areas of the histogram and actually slide left or right to move these adjustment sliders down here in the basic panel. So if you actually think about it, highlights and shadows don't have much room to move. They're stuck between the mid-tones and the whites or the mid-tones and the blacks. So highlights and shadows aren't gonna adjust your image as much as whites and blacks will. So I can bring down my highlights a bit or I can bring them up. So you can see, especially in those highlights of water around the subject, they get brighter or darker. I'm gonna reset that. Now let's take a look at shadows. And again, shadows is adjusting this section of my histogram. So again, it's stuck between the mid-tones and the black. So again, it's gonna be a more subtle adjustment. So let's slide my shadows to the left and right. So here, my shadows are getting darker. Here, my shadows are lightening up a bit. And I actually like to bring them up a bit for this image. All right, now my whites and blacks. This is the far end of my histograms. My whites up here on the right and my blacks over here on the left. These are gonna have much stronger adjustments on my image. So if I move my whites all the way to the right, you can see how much that adjusts my image versus adjusting my highlights. It's hard to see the highlights a bit, but with my whites, you can see how much that pulls the image. And pay attention to my histogram. If I move all the way to the right, almost the entire histogram is shifted, where my highlights didn't affect my histogram that much. So the black and white adjustment slider have much more control and much more power in my editing. Same thing with my blacks. I can make them darker or I can lighten them up a bit. So you can see the black and the white have much more control over my image than the highlights and shadows do. All right, the next section is presence. I have my texture, clarity, and dehaze sliders. Now these next three adjustment sliders are gonna affect our images in different ways. One thing to understand is frequency. When I say high frequency, I just mean areas of the image that have high contrast or a lot of detail. When I say low frequency, I mean the exact opposite. Low contrast or very little detail. Let me show you how it works. This first adjustment slider is going to add or decrease contrast in high frequency areas, so areas that have a lot of detail. So areas like the water here, the splashes, and my swimmer, and even the lane dividers, but other areas, kind of like the bottom or sides of the pool, it's not gonna add as much contrast. So if I increase the texture, you can start to see how much contrast was added to the detail of the splashing water. Let's reset that. So watch those edges of those splashes. You see how they increase in contrast? Kind of making those edges sharper. Now if I decrease it, it's going to soften those edges between those high contrast areas. So let's increase it overall in the image. So for this specific image, it does a pretty good job. Let's reset it and look at clarity. Now clarity is gonna actually add contrast mostly to the mid-tones of the image. So if I increase that, there's a lot of mid-tones throughout this image. So you can see, again, my mid-tones are kind of here in the middle of my histogram. If I increase that clarity, it's gonna add overall contrast then to the entirety of the image as opposed to just the small details. And again, that's because I have a lot of mid-tones throughout this image. All right, let's move to dehaze. Now dehaze is gonna be the strongest of the three. It's going to adjust my exposure, adjust the contrast, and saturate my image. Now as I move to the right, you'll notice that my blacks and my shadows darken, increasing the overall image contrast. My saturation also increases, so the colors are becoming more saturated. Now as I reset it and move to the right, you'll notice that my highlights and whites start to increase, causing my image to become less contrast. Saturation is still increasing, but that increase in highlights and whites 
has made my image so bright that that saturation is hard to identify, hard to see. Now, dehaze works really well when shooting through glass or underwater. It also works great to help you get rid of atmospheric perspective, or the haze, thus it's called dehaze, when shooting a landscape image. Now, hopefully you notice as I move down these adjustment sliders in the presence panel, that texture affects the image more subtly than clarity, and clarity affects the image more subtly than dehaze. So the effect gets a bit stronger as I move down. Now, to be honest, I don't use dehaze that much, but I will definitely use clarity and texture. Like for this image, I think a bit of texture really makes the image pop a bit more, especially with this detail of the water. Now next we have vibrance and saturation. These two adjustment sliders are all about color. Now my favorite is going to be vibrance. I use this quite a bit. It does a great job increasing or saturating your color without affecting already highly saturated areas and also skin tones. So it looks for skin tones, it looks for highly saturated colors and tries to protect them, not adjust them as much. Now with this specific image, because I'm shooting underwater, it's going to affect the skin tone a bit more because that skin tone's a little bit off. So you can see how much that affects the image. Now saturation is just gonna saturate the entirety of the image. It's not gonna consider anything in the image and just saturate the colors more. So if I increase that, you can see how much stronger of a saturation that is on the image overall. So you can see the skin tone there is quite a bit different. Or if I use vibrance, that skin tone there on the chest isn't as strong of an adjustment. So I'm gonna add a bit of vibrance to this image. All right, that's how you use the basic adjustment panel in Lightroom Classic. To be honest, I spend 70 to 80% of my time editing my images in the basic panel. Whether I'm converting my image to black and white, fixing the white balance, especially with that white balance selector tool, or adjusting my tone, especially my exposure, my contrast. And after that, I'm gonna move on to presence, affecting the detail of my image and also the colors throughout my image. If you have any questions about the basic adjustment panel in Lightroom Classic, please add them to the comments below. Or if you have any recommendations on what you'd like to see in our next video, please let us know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Basic panel is far from basic.